In this video, I'm going to be talking about arrays. We discussed variables in a previous video. An array is really just a group of variables that are of the same type. Now, if we imagine, instead of our variable box being a box, it's a locker. There's the door of the locker. And instead of having just one locker, you never really just have one locker on their own. You either have a row of lockers or a whole bank of lockers. Now what we can do with an array is we can give this row of lockers a name, say um, locker row 1. And instead of giving every locker a separate name, like we would do if there were separate variables in our code, we can just say locker 1, the first box, locker 1, the second box, locker 1, the third box. We have to set how many boxes our locker set has at the start when we create an array in C Sharp and we have to give a type to our array. In C Sharp as well arrays are numbered 0 onwards so if we have an array of 5 integers called um, X group you use X group 0 to enter box 1, X group 1 to enter box 2 and so on so you have 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4 as your numbers for your boxes. Now, a row of boxes, a row of lockers, or a single array, if you like, is known as a one-dimensional array, because the, you can imagine the boxes actually only move in one dimension. If you imagine an Excel spreadsheet where you have columns and rows, that's the equivalent of a two-dimensional array. And you can actually say, I want to build a two-dimensional array that's 10 lockers down by 100 lockers wide. And in those lockers, the way that you number them is start at 0, 0, at the top corner down to uh, 9, 99 at the bottom corner. If you want to do a three-dimensional array, imagine a whole cube of lockers, you can do that too. Instead of having just two coordinates, you now need three with commas separating between them. In fact, computers can do as many dimensions as you can possibly need or ever want. If you want 100 dimensions, if you really wanted, you can do that. The problem we've got is that human beings find it very difficult to visualise beyond four dimensions. However, computers don't find that sort of thing a problem. Arrays can be really useful if you want to make like a list. But the problem with most arrays in C Sharp is that the array has to be of a fixed size before you start. And if you don't know how many items you're going to need in your list, you might have to create say, um, an array of 10,000 before you actually start using it. There are ways around that. In the system.collections namespace, there is something called an array list. And in an array list, you can literally add new boxes to the bottom constantly. So that way, you can have an array which can make as big as you need as you go along, rather than have to have them as a fixed-sized array. However, fixed-sized arrays run much faster in computer programs than something like an array list.